maybe uh, opening statement on the season, and we'll take some questions. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. Uh, well, we're we're excited certainly to get started uh, with our with our basketball season. This has been um, you know an, uh, a good off season where we've been able to kind of enjoy what what we accomplished last year, um, and, and I think. You know, the biggest fear of coming off a successful season like that is is complacency or guys just enjoying too much what, what we were able to do. And, and I really haven't seen that. I mean, we've been we've been looking hard and making sure, uh, but I haven't seen that. I think it really has made the guys hungrier, more driven. Uh, you know, motivated them to work harder in the weight room, on the floor. Making sure we're we're kind of taking care of the things that we need to as as we prepare for this next season. So, uh, I think we're extremely excited. Uh, you know, we, we've tried to put together a schedule that that would, you know, rival last year's or, or give us an opportunity to do as well as we did last season. And um, just really looking forward to getting started. Questions for Coach Moon. Coach, when you lose two starters apart from the, the stats that uh, Ryan Butler and David Gonzalez contributed. I wonder if you might speak to other things that you're hoping to replace that they sort of vacated. Right. Well, you know, David and, and Ryan were two very good players who probably started I mean, over 150 games, maybe maybe almost 200 games. The experience that they brought, um, you know, specifically last year as seniors is something that's very, very difficult to, to replace. The understanding that they had um, as you said, John, in, in addition to the stats or the scoring or the shooting percentages, you know, their, their overall ability and understanding of, of how we were going to win is probably what, what we'll miss the most. That for them, they just, they just knew because they had been there so many times how, how we're going to win, what we're looking to do. Uh, and I would say most specifically from a, from a basketball, from a technical standpoint, is their defense. They're probably two of the very best defenders we've uh, we've had here, two of the best defenders that you know the school has seen. I think, um, you know, they're both I think ranked in the top five in steals all time. But beyond that, their ability to guard their man, an understanding of of our defense, uh, you know, it, it they they were great, le you know, legitimately great defenders, and that's going to be something that's hard to replace. Hey, if I can follow up by asking you, is it too simple to say? Martell slips into one of those spots and Brothers slips into one of those spots? I think so. I think because of, um, you know, they're those kind of guys, it changes the dynamic. You know, uh, you know, you don't just replace David because of, a, you know, a particular skill set that Darian has. You know, you don't replace him as a senior, you know, with a guy who, who's just, just a sophomore. And same thing with Ryan. That those guys do different things and bring – bring things new and good to the table, but at the same time, they don't, they don't just plug in. So I think, uh, you know, as we stand right now, that those are the guys we'd probably be looking to toward, um, you know, being the starters in those spots, respectively. But I think Kevin Smith has a – will, will play a lot for us and, you know, in both those positions. Um, but I, I think it's difficult to just say, hey, you, you're going to go do what Dave did um, because – by the time he's a senior in college, Dave is a, an all-league player who just has a, a great deal of experience and a lot of different, you know, uh, just a lot of different factors in his game that made him unique. Does, does your program now have the look and the identity that you would like it to, and has it taken you the five, six, seven years to, to get it that way? And if it does, how satisfying right. is it? Well, I think it does. I think that um, right now when, when, when you see our team, you can see uh, the athleticism I think probably jumps out at you where, uh, you know, we, our guys look strong. They look the part. Uh, they play together. You know, that's probably the, the, the biggest thing is just playing together, having a good feel for, for where everybody is, playing team defense, sharing the ball on offense. I think those things are – are very, very important um, to me. And it is satisfying that, that we're at a place where we have so many good players on our roster and guys who are, uh, you know, taking care, of their, taking care of their business on the floor, in the weight room, in the classroom, uh, and being the kind of team that I think Richmond, that represents Richmond very, very well. Uh, you know, a team with guys who 
play very hard, play together, um, you know, treat each other respectfully, treat everybody around them respectfully, uh, and give a really good representation uh, of the university. How, how tough was it for both you and some of the players, the older players in the program, to have the patience through some of the leaner times? And have you caught yourself telling any of them, told you so? Right. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, you know, it, th those those things are difficult to to endure, and and we were doing with so many young players that it's it's hard to succeed. You know, if when we take the floor now and have so many upperclassmen to to think that we're trying to accomplish the same things years ago with all freshmen, that's just a that's just a pipe dream, you know, and, and very very difficult. And so, uh, some of those guys who are here, you know, especially. You know, Dave and I talked about it a lot last year. Ryan, Dan, certainly Kevin Hovde, just about that. You know, th th those were difficult times, and and we would talk before practices about that we were getting better, that we need to, you know, that we were improving, that this is what it's going to look like. And um, so I haven't said I told you so, but I think we've together said, you know, we we knew we could do this, and it it feels great to have accomplished it. The the double overtime game in. The A-10 championship game, and then getting to the tournament, but not winning a game. I mean, how motivated is it? And what was that like in the offseason about how ready they are to get going? Well, I think everybody's really, really motivated. Our guys were here in summer school um, and and worked extremely hard. Jay DeMeo, who's our great strength coach, uh, it, you know, is really, really happy with it, with everybody's progress. Uh, I th I think that you know. As great as last year was, there still is a little bit of a, a feeling that we could we could do better, or we could, we could have put ourselves in a position to accomplish the similar things that you know that that we could move forward and and, and do even better. So, you know, I don't think we we look at it as um, you know ultimately it was a great season and 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 we did some really really special things, uh, but we we did have that piece where we were so close in the championship game and. Uh, and we feel that we didn't do our best in the NCAA tournament game. So I hope that we can look at those things as, as a motivation. You know, not, not necessarily, like I said, I don't think we look back at it and are, are disappointed, but I think we can look at those things as a motivation for this season. And the fact that you are a little bit disappointed, even though you got where you were, I mean, that says a lot about the program as well. No question. I, I think we have guys who are, are really hungry and motivated and – recognize now you know when 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 these things are your dream and then they become kind of your goal and then all of a sudden you're 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 there you're a team that's being talked about in the off season a team that was nationally ranked and you know when when you have those when those things happen to you now all of a sudden they're they're real and you can reach out and touch them and you can see this year's schedule and say you know wow it, it sets up a little bit like last year and this is these are the kind of things we could do so i think that is great i think it is um because your your mindset going in is you know is so important you know you you don't want to you know imagine yourself as not being you know as well this is this really couldn't happen i think for us you know watching watching the rest of the tournament and you know thinking about last year's games and wins and uh you know some of the some of the great games that we were able to have uh, i think it, it it speaks to the fact that we could we could really we could really be special and you know, we know that we have to kind of take it one day at a time, but we could do something special. Hey, Chris, what do you expect the defense's opponents to do to uh, Kevin Anderson, new and different um, in the absence of David and just because of the year he had last year? Well, yeah, I, I think Kevin will obviously be the focal point of, of, of our opponent's defense. It, it, and David did take a lot of the pressure off him. You know, David's such a, a unique matchup himself because he's so strong. The ability to shoot the ball from, you know, incredibly long range – uh, the willingness to take big shots, and I think Day or uh, Kevin, you know, there's there's a bit of a comfort level because it was it was two of the premier guards in in the country coming at you rather than just him. And uh, I think we're going to see, you know, it, to to me the the reason he's such a, a difficult match for there's a million reasons, but one of the reasons he's such a difficult matchup is because he has the ball in his hands. And how do you get the ball out of his hands? You know, he's such um, an excellent dribbler and has such a good feel for the game that it's hard to get the ball out of his hand. So uh, that would that would be how I would attack it. You know, tr just try to get him to, to give up the ball uh, early, try not to have him be able to do things. But, you know, that 
you know, you have to commit somebody else to doing that. It's not like one single defender can make him give up the ball. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. I think Kevin has a has worked very hard. I think he has a, an excellent idea of of just what you're saying that he's going to see some things that are that are a little bit different. Um, and I think he's I think he's just ready to play and, and ready for that challenge. In the past, his three point shooting, if he could get it on a consistent level, maybe. 33%, 35% is the number you've used before, would make him that much better. I wonder if you've seen that improvement uh, in Kevin. Definitely. He, he is shooting the ball better now than he ever has. Uh, you know, I've said that if he, if he got to be a 35% shooter and average four assists, I think he'd be an All-American. And um, I think he's he's close to those numbers. And, I you know, he, is, he, he probably is an All-American. So, um, you know, I, I think you can't overstate how how good he has been and how great his career has been. And having grown up in Philadelphia, I could name 25 players who were not a 10 player of the year. And, you know, and this kid is a player of the year as a junior in, in one of the best conferences in the country. Um, just a tremendous, tremendous player. And he he definitely has worked hard to get better this off season, which speaks volumes about the returning a 10 player of the year. I could just clarify the thirty-five percent you're talking about with three-point distance. Yes. Three mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Which Dan Duro can we expect to see uh, this year? <laughs> will it be the sophomore year or will it be last year? Usually, it takes like a full year of playing to get right. back. Well, I mean, you know, I, I think you'll see the senior year, Dan, and uh, he. You know, I, I think I think Dan had a good season last year. You know, if if you if you look at the you know um, the He's probably the best passing big man in the Atlantic Ten. I think that uh, he he's he displayed toughness and leadership on a team that you know finished with 26 wins, and he probably just didn't score as much as as he had before the injury. So I, I don't think it's you know I think it's overstating it a little bit to say that I, th I think he wishes he had had a more productive season statistically. But I think he had he had a good season and, and an extremely valuable season for us. Uh, having said that, he, he looks really really good. Uh, he's worked very very hard. Um, you know he's you'll see him today. He's lost probably 30, 32, 33 pounds, um, and he's extremely motivated to have to have a great season. You know both uh, for our team and and individually. And I, you know I think Dan will be right on track to be one of the best big big guys in our conference and um, you know here's a guy with over a thousand points as he enters his senior year and he's been to the NSA tournament and uh, you know he's he's had a, a great career and I think this year he'll, he'll take you know another step toward, toward that that uh, toward that career. And things like that, what do you expect from this year's freshman class? How much he'll play? Well yeah you know we felt that um, well, on paper that this was our, our best class that, that we've recruited so far. Um, now, you know, the senior class is pretty good <laughs> that we have. Uh, and those guys have had, you know, they have a lot of college statistics to back them up. Uh, but this class we thought was really, really good. Um, I think that, you know, Derek Williams, who, who has had a turf toe injury in the fall here, and Cedric Lindsay really have a, a great opportunity to play. And Wayne Sparrow, I think, in a, in, a, in, a, in a more traditional year, I think he'd have an opportunity to play too, and he does. Uh, but with as many good players we have in in the backcourt and, and that on the perimeter, I think it's going to be a challenge. But I, I think that uh, I think that both those the, the other two freshmen really have a chance to play for us. And they